Okay, so we can start. Are there any questions about the um, yeah, so my plan, uh, again, was, as I wrote on the announcement, was to solve these problems from the PDF. Yeah. And then, well, if we have time, I would just solve more, some more. But that's kind of like a representative sample, I think, that complements some of the examples we have done in class. Um, and yeah, so let me start, actually. I won't go, like, numerically from, like, you know, I will just, like, choose, like, the most, like, the more computational problems first. Yeah. And then I'll go to the rest. Okay, yeah, let's start with seven because that one is useful. I think I think there was a a similar one in the, one of the assignments uh due this week. So problem seven. Okay, and the idea is to, so that system depends on A. So the idea is to de determine in terms of A when the system has no solutions, infinite solutions, or like a unique solution, right? So find in terms of A, uh, whether it's a unique solution, no solution, or a unique solution. Okay, so um, let me write that from the list so that I, I know I'm gonna think about this one again. So, I mean, the idea here is simply to, you know, uh, solve it uh, in the regular sense. Um, it's just that sometimes when you do an operation, if you have to do like one over A row one or one over, or uh, you know one over a plus one uh, row two like whenever you have to do like a division on a row then you have to worry am I dividing from by something that could become zero so that's like the main concern when there's like a value of a like hanging around in the system of equations except for that everything else is kind of like the usual thing we have been doing so let's um, it's a similar concern that we had last time when we were finding values for the inverses of the matrices, right? Like where I uh, gave you some of the entries in terms of A and B that we had to ask, well, what happens if A was zero or A uh, was not zero, things like that. So if you write this down as a matrix, you get one, one, negative one, two, uh, one, two, one, three, and one, one, A squared minus five, A. Okay. So it, it has been reduced to some extent. I mean, it's already uh, relatively decent. It is, but we have to, again, try to reach the identity as much as possible. Um, so uh, you can use a one in this first entry, right, to put a zero and zero here. And again, remember to do like this structure. Once you have a one here, make the first column bunch of, bunch of zeros. Once you have a one here, make the rest bunch of zeros and so on. So to put a, a one, you can do minus row one plus row two into row two, and sorry, to make a zero. And to make a zero in row three, um, you can do minus row one plus row three into row three, right? And again, like as a time-saving strategy, if the operations are taking place on different rows, it's better to do them simultaneously because you don't want to copy this like, like you know, more than necessary, like uh, do this. Um, because they kind of like uh, eat, out of, eat up a lot of space, like writing the matrices. So 
So when you do the first operation, you get uh, one minus one, which is zero, two minus one, which is one, one minus minus one, which is two, and then three minus two, which is one, right? And then you get uh, one minus one, which is zero, one minus one, which is zero, and then, um, right, uh, a squared minus five minus minus one, which is uh, a squared, I mean, this becomes plus one, so with this minus five, it becomes minus four. Right, and then you get a minus two. So, so far so good. Feel free to stop me if it is not the case. Also, be, feel free to double check and, and not making any typos because otherwise it would ruin the, the solution. So now, uh, there are two things we want. We have to put a zero here. We want to do that. And we would also like to put a one here, right? Now to put a one here, you have to do this division thing that I was doing, like uh, talking about like dividing by a squared minus four. That will not, it's not tricky, but that does require some thought about what can I do that? So it's better not to do the two operations at the same time to just kind of isolate the case that could become problematic. So let me just like do quickly uh, the zero here. You kind of have, want to do as many operations before making cases. That's kind of the philosophy here, right? So in order to put a zero on, on this entry, you don't need to assume anything else about A. So let's do that by doing minus row two plus one, row one into row one. So when you do, let's copy the other two. If nothing happens to them, so you get zero, zero, x squared minus four, and a minus two. Okay. And here you get one, zero, negative one minus two is negative three, and then two minus one is one. And so that's what this is. Is that making sense? Okay, and then now we do reach the point where we have to say something about A in order to continue, right? Um, so what are the uh, what are the uh, risky values that A can have? Negative. Yeah, just because if you factorize this, right, this by the difference of square formula, this is A minus two times A plus two, right? So that's uh, there are two possibilities where this could become zero. So it's your preference when do you want to do this like we might as well just do those two cases quickly because they typically will take less time than the rest so let's just try to do um, th those possibilities so what happens like if a equals two what happens with the matrix you get one zero negative three one zero one two one Zero, zero. Well, we, we already know that this has to be zero, right? And when A equals two, you get zero. Is, is that making sense? So just to practice concepts, like what would be the rank of, of this thing? The rank of this matrix would be what? It would be two, right? Like you count the number of non-zero rows and the nullity would be what? Oh, well, let's check yeah. It's just one, right? Because yeah, there are three columns and the rank is two. So it's three minus rank. I mean, number of columns minus rank, which is one. Another way to say this is like, we expect infinitely many solutions in this case uh, in terms of one variable because the uh, nullity is one. So let's try to write it down to see how this looks like. So this is the same as X minus three Z equals one, right? And Y plus two Z equals one. So you see everything is going to determine depend in terms of x and in terms of z, right? Because you can say that x equals one plus three z. And 
one minus two z equals y. So the solution here is like infinitely many, right? Where x, y, z uh, becomes like one plus three z, one minus two z, and and here you can say something like c is arbitrary. Uh, Is that making sense? Questions? Um, how did you, I mean, I think here it was somewhat weird if a equals two, you could get a squared negative four, and that's what we think of zero. But is, is there a philosophy, is there like a way to think about it? It wasn't so simple like it. Well, the thing is that we wanted a one here, right? I want a one here, so eventually I want to do something like this. This is what I, I want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So I just have to ask, when can this become problematic, right? And it's just when a equals two or negative two. Uh, in practice, you know, like um, typically it would be like a quadratic polynomial because that's the only one for one for which you know how to set equals to zero, right? Because you're trying to solve like this thing. Uh, so like, it's not that you have that many skill, the tools to, you know, solve equations exactly unless it's quadratic. So like for like more or less all those cases will be simple in that sense. If that's what you were asking. I mean, there wouldn't be something with like a sign of A, you know, like an exponential of A or even a cubic thing with A because you don't have like the general formula for, I mean, there's like a general formula for the solution of a cubic equation, but it's not something people like kind of know at the top of their heads. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, yeah, for practical purposes, typically uh, you would have to solve like a quadratic equation to find the problematic values of A. We wouldn't go like beyond that in terms of like, difficulty. Um, then we can send us any other questions. Yeah. Uh, how I, did I know that it was infinite many solutions? Uh, so like, well, uh, if you, if one option is to think about it in terms of the rank and nullity, the idea is when the nullity is positive, that for sure will tell you that there are infinite many solutions. That's one way to think about it. Uh, if you want to do it more concretely, you can be like, well, I cannot simplify this any further. So you just rewrite the equations in terms of the variables. And then you see like, well, you're stuck. You have three variables and two, on, uh, you know, two equations. Like the most you can do is like write two in terms of one, which is what you see here. So like either way, you kind of uh, notice that uh, you were dealing with uh, infinite many solutions. Does that make sense? I mean, this is actually like, I don't know how many of you, how many of you are taking 251 multivariable? Uh, I mean, this is kind of like the equation of a line, particularly, because it depends on a parameter on a one variable z, which you can later call t, and this is like a equation of a line. So like the solutions here were like, was like a line, but I mean, that's not too important for, it's kind of nice to know, but it's not too important for our purposes. Uh, it's more important to know that it was infinitely made. Okay, any other questions or numbers? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was the multi was too low What did you say about a plane? If nullity existed. Oh, right. If you, if the nullity had been two, would be like a plane, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a set. Right, right. A plane, yeah, because it's two dimensional, a plane, and so it needs two parameters or two free variables, correct? Yeah. Okay, and then there was this other case, which I, I have a written uh, k equals a negative two, right? If you plug in a equals negative two there, you get one, zero, negative three, one, uh, zero, one, two, one, and then zero, 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 and now it's negative four, right? The last one, because now it equals negative two. And uh, what can we say about this one? It's no solution, right? Because if you look at the last equation, it says zero x plus zero y plus zero z equals negative four, or zero equals negative four, which is impossible, right? So no solutions. Is that making sense? So again, like uh, 
this could have been done at the very end of the problem. You just have to put it somewhere like in your work, like a box that reminds you, oh, this is like the last matrix before I made any assumptions about A. And let me go back to this matrix to see how it looks like. Or you can just like interrupt the, the rest of the work and just do this quickly, get, get over with that, and then just move, uh, continue with the more like general case. Yeah. So in that case, they're X uh, literally independent? Uh, in this case, you want, uh, well, it depends on uh, how you want to use the word independent. Like, there are no solutions in the sense that, like, if you should think of this like originally there were like three different I mean there were like three plain equations here so they're kind of like what is happening like what this is saying is that for that value of a the three planes never meet at this at, at, they don't have any points in common right but um uh yes I'm not sure uh, if you were thinking about the word independent in a slightly different way okay. no uh, it, like geometrically, it's like the, the plane, those three planes didn't, they may have met like two by two, right? Like two of them met at a line, the other two met at a line, but those two lines never cross one another. That's kind of how you could think about it if you want. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Could the rank in that one be defined? I mean, yeah, you can still say, uh, okay. You could say, right, like the, react, the rank of the matrix A is still two, but the rank of the augmented matrix was three, right? So that, uh, because now you have another, if you if you erase the vertical line, then you have like a, an extra non-zero row. So that like, that brings you, brings us back to last week when I said that if the rank of the matrix and the augmented one disagreed, then there was no solution. Again, like you can think about it in terms of the rank, but like in the no solution case, it's kind of very straightforward to see it once you see, no solution is just literally always zero, 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 vertical line, something non zero. So that's how you will detect it, which you can, like, again, dress up in terms of like this rank talk, but that doesn't buy you too much. I think. Anyone else? Okay, so that was our aside where we kind of uh, dealt with the problematic potential problematic cases. So like, I believe there's one of the assignments of this week, which is kind of similar in spirit to this one, right? Like, so before you do the divisions that are needed, just analyze this at some point, like do the analog of this. And once we know that we're safe in the sense that uh, A is not two or negative two, then we can do uh, what I wanted to do before, which was I do one over A squared minus four row three. Okay, and so this gives you one, zero, negative three, zero, one, two, zero, zero, one, 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 uh, one over A plus two. Is that making sense? And uh, we can now use this one to put zero zeros, right? To two zeros. So how, how can I do that? I can do like, for example, uh, three row three plus row one into row one. And I'm also going to do um, minus two row three plus row two into row two. So, I mean, once you do those operations, you will get like the identity matrix here. And here. Something like this will look. I mean, don't worry about simplifying it. I mean, don't worry about simplifying the right hand side more. This this is clear enough. And so what is this case? It's a unique solution, right? Because we have the identity. So this is a unique solution. Uh, where x equals one plus three over a plus two, y equals one minus two over a plus two, and z equals one over a plus two. Okay. Is that is that making sense? Let me keep this in.
so one thing to notice is that if you look at these just last matrix, right? The only case that's obviously problematic would have been A equals negative two, right? Because here you do see like an issue with A equals negative two. So you may have forgotten about A equals two, right? If you do re don't remember to write it down because like we did some simplifications, right? So you have to be careful. Be I remember someone asked me this last time when we were talking about the inverse. It's not that you can always just read so clearly from the last matrix what were the problematic values because when you write the last matrix, you did some cancellations. So those cancellations already took into account that you were outside the problematic case. So here, like it is clear that you would have had like an issue if A equals negative two, but there was also a potential issue with A equals two. So you do have, uh, you did need to remember, you do need to remember that at some point, you cannot just look at the final solution to, to, to figure that out. So that's why I recommend, uh, again, like you could have done this after doing this, but you do need to write somewhere in your work, like a box that says, oh, I have to look at A equals two, A equals negative two, otherwise it's a problem. Is that okay? Other questions? Okay, so this is like a uh, good example just to show you um, uh, the flavor of those problems. Let me do, let me see what, of the list, which one, uh, which other one is important right now. Okay, problem A, eight, that's also useful to have. Okay, I'll leave that for a second here. Did you do they tell you that And the question, I mean, the question had three parts the way I wrote it, but the important thing is to find the matrix. Like the first two are kind of more like straightforward. Um, so they may be needed in a solution, so we can do, the, do them if needed. But for now, let's just find the matrix X, which solves. Um, X B transpose also seen like as A X transpose. Oh my god, I almost killed my computer. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, not it probably wouldn't have died if it had fallen that way. Yes. Uh, let's see. Need to be careful about these cables. Uh Now it's better. Yeah. You're recording. Okay. Uh, let me consider. Okay, I don't want to spoil the answer. So what can you do first here? What would be a way to start this problem? Yeah. Um, you can like the X B transpose, you can like the B 15 X uh, Good, so you can like the idea, this is like a problem to test your knowledge of properties of the transpose essentially and the inverses. So remember that X B transpose, it is B transpose X transpose. This is like a property you can use Important property for you to know. Uh, 
This is C, that's fine. Now, uh, maybe I didn't say it explicitly. A is just like a scalar, it's a number, right? A number can be pulled out of like a transpose. Think of a transpose, like it's, in that sense, it's kind of similar to like an integral or derivative. If you have seen those things where, you know, you can take out like a constant out of like an integral derivative, you can take like a constant out of like a transpose. That's what I'm trying to say. So this is the same as A X A transpose, okay? And then I'm, out, I'm going to apply the same logic to, to the last part, right? I'm going to take this transpose as A transpose X transpose. I'm going to do this. Is that making sense? Okay, so now what can you do next? Maybe like factor in A out of the right side. Uh, well, uh, depends. Uh, we're talking about capital A or lowercase a. Well, the factor in the A, like since it only appears once, it's not that useful to factorize in this particular case. Um. Uh, you have to do something. Uh, we're trying to solve for x. That's what you have to remember. Yeah, I like that idea. So you can put this, uh, all these moving to the left hand side. Are we okay with this? And now what? Yeah, we can factorize an X transpose. You just have to be careful when you do the factorization in the sense that X transpose appears on the right. So if you factorize it, you have to factorize it kind of from the right. You'll see what I mean in a second. It is the right factor, or the last factor um, on each of these two. So you have to rewrite this this way. Is that making sense? Yeah. Uh, so why is it that not have to this uh, Let's see. Are we talking about this little? This is just a number, so it's transposes itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. So for a number, it's not that we, I mean, a number is like a very extreme case. A number is a one by one matrix. <laughs> if you really want to think about it that way. So the transpose of a one by one matrix is itself because like there's no rows and columns to move around, if, if, if that makes sense. But yeah, um, good. Is that making sense? So like again, X transpose was the second factor in each of these summons. So it has to appear as the second factor when you factorize it because you cannot move around the order of multiplication. So that's important to check. And we're almost there, right? Yes. Oh, right. Like if you had been like, as long as they're both on the correct, on the same side, you can. So for example, if you had been like X, E, E, T, right? Plus A, X, T, A, T, right? If you had been something like this, then you can say this is X, T, B transpose plus A, A, T. That also would have been fine because now, both x's appear as a first factor. What you cannot do is like a, a hybrid where like you have like this x appears first and this x appears second, then you're screwed because like you cannot factorize it. Like basically, is that making sense? Okay, so if both are the first factor, you can factorize it. If both are the last factor, you can factorize it. But if one is the first one and the other is the second one, then you cannot do anything. Is, is that okay? Yeah, but like, I guess like the important thing here would have been to notice that it, it comes first, so it has to be first when you factorize. Is that okay? Okay, so we are almost there. Um, how do you solve this equation for x? Multiply both sides by the inverse. Yeah, let, you just cross your fingers that you can invert that. I mean, the problem should have been well written, so that should be fine. 
So if you, if this has an inverse, right? What I would like to do next, I just to show you how this would look like. I'm going to multiply by the inverse. Um, Okay, uh, times C. Right, so if that thing has an inverse, which we still don't know, but we have like a concrete formula for A, B, and C, so we will check that it does. So if that has an inverse, then... Uh, And it is like when this sees this, they cancel one another, right? So you just end up with x transpose, which is great. And I, I mean, you were looking for x, but once you have x transpose, you will just transpose whatever you got, and then that's your answer. So it's not a problem. So that would be like a transpose, a, a transpose inverse to c. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> Questions up to this point. Yeah. Um, so I'll let the midterm, you can just leave your answer to X transpose. I, I mean, well, we're not, uh, this is part one. Part two is a plot using the actual matrices, right? So it's, I mean, it is fine, right, to leave it in terms of X transpose because you just write transpose on both sides. You know, what's X? Like X is uh, the transpose of all of these, right? If that makes sense. So is there really not that much of a difference, um, you know, between this version and this version? That's fine because um, we're about to do this computation. So uh, it doesn't really matter how you wrote it. Like you kind of isolated it. Isolating X or isolating X transpose for all practical purposes is essentially the same thing. It, it, that's okay. Um, and that, and moreover, that would be fine because I'm, I did give you like specific matrices to work with. So. It just it's a, it looks a little bit cleaner uh, for X transpose and for X. There's more like stuff involved. Yeah. yeah also, did it not matter? Did it not matter what side you put that uh, negative uh, the inverse? Oh no no, it does matter because that's a good question. Like if you can put like the inverse on this side, right? Well, I guess on the other side of the B transpose. Like, oh here. Uh, on the on the left side, instead of putting it to the left of the original we had. Yeah, put it on the right of that, but then kept the x transpose to the right. Oh, is that you cannot like right? Like I see, you cannot put this like squeeze it in between these two, because you have to imagine that like, the num like the matrix. <laughs> how should I explain? Like it it would be kind of like a ghost. It went through x transpose right to be next to, to this thing. I mean, I think I think what you're trying to say is that like, you want to write it like you. You're asking me if you could have put this in between the two, right? Yeah. But how can you, like that, what I'm trying to say is you cannot put it in between the two through a multiplication, right? Because here, like you literally can imagine that both sides are being multiplied from the left by this quantity, right? But how through a multiplication can you insert this thing in the middle, if you know what I mean? You have to go through, X transpose, if that makes sense. Even though they're both I at the end, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, yeah, but it's like, uh, it's just that it will, I mean, in this case, it looks like as if it doesn't matter, but if you had had more like, like for example, imagine that you had had like, um, this had not been C, right? Like this had been like C, C transpose or something like that. Like, so this thing, would you still keep it on the left or do you also put it in the middle? If it's, it creates a lot more, I mean, it just cannot be done in that way. Right. Yeah, you, I mean, it, it, that's the only thing you have to be careful when you do this multi multiplication with matrices. It really is factorizing all from the left, all from the right, multiplication all on the left, all on the right. It is not allowed to like just put things, like squeeze things like, them in the middle of like whatever you had 
Does that make any sense? Yeah. Can you possibly just solve the system from that step to find the uh the entries of that transcendent? Oh, you could like you mean if by solving the system, like you write like x in terms of the yeah. You like uh, has like entries like you know x x one x y z or whatever. Yeah, it just would take you a lot more time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not efficient to do it that way. Yeah. Um. Yeah, definitely you like that, right? Like the idea is to do it this way because it would take you an, etern an eternity if you try to do it like just like uh giving entries to you know unknown. You don't know what x is, so you call it entries x y z w or whatever. It ends up be being needed. Is that make any other questions? So uh, let's just work this out. So what is B transpose plus A, A transpose? That's what we need to take the inverse of, right? So B transpose is 0, 1, 1, 1 plus A. A transpose is uh, 1, 0. One, one. Okay, and so this gives you, you know, like the A can be moved inside each entry. So when you do the the operations, you get one A, one plus A. Uh, because this one gives you A, so if zero is A, one and this one gives you a so one plus a one and there's a zero here so there's nothing else to add and then one plus a so this is what um the transpose is that making sense and we need the inverse of that matrix right so what's the inverse of this So remember to find the inverse of this matrix you augmented with the identity. We did that. I mean, this one should shouldn't be too fat long because uh, it looks very similar. And you try to reduce this to the identity matrix, right? Uh, so what's the first operation that makes sense to do here? I guess swap the rows. Yeah, swap the rows because you don't want to start your solution by dividing by a. Uh, I mean, even though even though the problem said already that a is not zero, you don't want to like because then you'll get like one plus a over a. That's like a bit of a mess. So the easiest thing to do is like is to swap them. So that have, that's what you get when you swap them. Okay, and then this is this is going to be fun because all right, this is going to be fun because like the operation we have to do is minus a row one plus row two, right? And that's what we will put into row two. So when we do that, you get one one plus a zero one. So this will become a zero. And then you get like the one plus a uh, minus a minus a squared. Right. Uh, and then that make sense. So this is the same as um, one zero one plus a one minus a squared zero one one minus a. Okay. And let's just make our life easier. Like let's assume that the problems are from the beginning that a also could not be plus or minus one because otherwise we we would need to make an extra case based on you know when we do the division that whether one minus a squared had to be zero, that could have been a plus or minus one. So let's say we also threw that one out to simplify our lives. Mm, 
So what you would do now is divide uh, the second row by one minus a squared, right? Uh, one. Okay, we're almost there. So the last step is to do minus one plus a row two into row one and substitute that into row one. So you get one, zero, zero, one. And then what, when you do, then you get eight. Okay, so this would be one plus A. Oh. One minus one. Yeah. And then you get what? You get well, the problem with this is what there should be. Like as so I that means that the inverse of B transpose plus A a transpose, and if I didn't make any mistakes, would be Wait, it should be negative like a four plus a squared. Oh, yeah, um, row two of the previous step. Oh, here. Uh, yeah. Oh, when I did, um, oh, I see you're saying that there should be an a negative a of one. Excellent, thank you. You just saved that for me. Yeah, so, um, one minus over one minus three. Yeah, so it becomes one. So you're saying that this one, right, right like, like this, this becomes negative, this is still the same. And then it's one minus a. Is that the denominator is still a one minus a squared, not one plus a? Okay, so like it was still, uh, let's see, this is where I. We were fine here, right? Yeah. Okay, ah, yeah, so this is like an a, the. Okay. Okay, so almost everything was about to collapse, right? So now this this is looking better, right? This side was fine. And then when you do one plus a, there's a cancellation here. So you get one. One minus a. That should be negative one over one minus a. Uh, negative a over one minus a squared, right? Or no, you're doing the first column of the. Oh, here. Yeah. So let's see. That's one minus a. There's so it should be negative of uh, one over one minus two. So when I did like this operate, this operation was fine, right? Yeah. So when I do one plus a uh, multiplying here, and that one, uh, you just get one over one minus a, right? Yes. So oh, I see. You, you're saying that it should be in the denominator. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Is that better now? Okay. So all the mistakes happened <laughs> in the uh, accumulated over the last matrix. And now you have a real life demonstration of how the solution can just collapse. Yeah. So is everything else fine? But yeah, that's a good enough. Shouldn't the second term be one plus a over one minus a? Yeah. Oh, here. Yep. Yeah, that this should be in the denominator, you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh no, that might come to the desk enough. Uh, is this better now? Is all okay? Yes or no? One minus a. One minus a because all oh, right because you're doing the one plus. Oh. Uh, okay. 
I'll listen. You can, okay, let's say you call this, right. I, there's nothing I can do with the first entry, right? The, this one also should be the same. One minus A here. The A cancel if you do that. So you get one over uh, one minus A, right? And the other one is one, A minus A over one minus A squared. Good. Okay. So that's the inverse that we needed here. And then X transpose finally would be that thing. Times uh, the matrix C, right? Oh, were you going to somewhere else? Okay. Is that it? Is that okay? So let's see. I mean, like, let's just write it down without see, trying to simplify much to say what that's like. Negative A over one minus A plus one over one minus A. Again, this could be simplified better. So, uh, then, okay, this one can be simplified easily. So this can be one, I think. And then um, A over one minus A squared plus um, minus A over one minus A squared. Oh, okay, this one should be zero. That's cool. This one is fine. I'll just, I'll simplify this one in a second. And then, um, And this you can you can put as as being zero. And uh, this should be one also. Crossing fingers that there were no other mistakes, and then and the transpose that's not too bad. It's just transposing this. Okay. Yeah, is that last or the uh? This one. Yeah, shouldn't that be um, A minus one over one minus A squared? Let's see. So it, it would be, right, A minus one over my, one minus A squared, right? This um, one minus A times one plus A, right? Oh, yeah. And then, no, like after all that I did, so I have to explain it. So yeah, I did some extra simplifications, but. Okay, let's do like um, the quick ones and then we will focus on four, which is a bit longer. So just to like uh, have a mental break of all these long calculations. So let me do problem one. Uh, like 143 and 44 are kind of more like theoretical, so it's still, um, but still it's kind of like useful to see them so that you have like, uh, you have like, 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 like the short groups work in this course. So,
Okay. So it does suppose x not solves um, a x equals b. If x not plus t u solves ax equals b and t is non zero, t is a non zero scalar, uh, show that uh, u solves a homogeneous. Okay, again, this is kind of more like a short proof. It's more like get used to notation type thing. So uh, what does it mean to say that X not solves the system, right? Let me just do like a translation for you of that. That means that uh, this means that A X not equals B, right? That, mean, that means I think of X not like as some particular values of X, Y, Z, W or whatever that you know. So saying that that solves the system just means that when you do the, the matrix times those values for X, Y, Z, W, whatever, you get the vector B. Does that make any sense? <laughs> and likewise, what does it mean to say that X naught plus T U solves this system? What does it mean to that A times X naught plus T U equal the vector B? Is that making sense? So again, it's more like oh, do like more like a interpretation type uh, problem of like understanding what the what the notation and the word words mean. So so what can you do now um, in this case? Well, I guess you could assume that t times vector u v zero. Uh well we still don't we don't necessarily know that t times the vector u is zero we don't know anything about what the product would look like because t is also allowed to change value I mean you don't know the value for t so t could be pi or but if u was zero then t would t times that would still be negative right if u were zero but we don't necessarily know that the vector u is zero you were were you going to say something yeah maybe like yeah. Well, good. Uh, you mean in the second equation? Yeah. Perfect. I like that idea. So if you distribute here, you get what? You get A x naught plus uh, A T U equals B. Is that okay with everyone? And there's some slightly more of a simplification that can be done here. I mean, not a simplification, but yeah. Uh, so this is the first part, like a x naught with b. Okay, let's okay. Let's do that if you want. Uh, right, we can plug in that with b. So you get b, and what is there another way where how I can rewrite this? Uh, the t right, like the t can be taken out because it's just a number. So this is like an exp like just to remind you that like if it's a scalar you can move it like the scalars can the numbers can be moved anywhere where you want uh, like in a multiplication like kind of like the regular old days 
So you can put this like P A U equal to P. Is, is that okay so far, sir? And we're almost there, right? So what's the next step? Subtract B. Right, you can now subtract or cancel the Bs like that. It doesn't matter how you want to think about it. So if you subtract, there's like a B here, a B, a B here. So you get P A U equals zero, right? Like, and when I mean zero here, I mean the not the number zero, but the vector zero, right? Because now we're dealing with vectors. And there's just one final step that we need. Oh, I don't think it's T, right? Like since T is non-zero, right? That's why it says that T is non-zero. Divide both sides by T, right? So T is non-zero. So, so that tells you that A U equals zero. So that means that U solves like the homogeneous equation, right? Uh, if the nullity of the matrix were uh, zero, that does mean that U had to be the zero vector. But that's a different. I mean, you cannot. You don't know more more about that. So. So that means that uh, that you solve the homogeneous. Is that making sense? Vector B just appears like which would be a vector minus vector. Right. Yes. Uh, you can think of it as you're just subtracting B both sides. So yeah, it is. Uh, th that does behave the same as like uh, with numbers. Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, sorry. So we can't just set the vector quantities like x not equal to x not plus t u. Right. Oh, the vector like the setting this equal to this. Yeah. Uh, no, that cannot be said. Uh, they cannot be said equal to one another because I um. Since you only know that they solve the equations, they are always come together with the matrix A, in a sense. Right. Is that is that making sense? Can you explain that again? I'm sorry. That, like, is that, uh, like, the question was whether you could set x not equal yeah, yeah. directly to x not plus tu, right? And what I was saying is that uh, you can't because the only thing that you know about these two vectors is that each solves the system of equations. But solving the system of equations always comes, uh, it always involves the matrix A, right? So you don't have an equation for them isolate in isolation. You just have them an equation for these vectors together with the matrix A. That's what I'm trying to say. Is that okay? Any other questions about this? Just as a remark that's useful, like for those who, like kind of like uh, in practice, like the way in which this is used is like backwards. So in practice, in practice, it is used as the fault. In practice, and this is used backwards. In the sense that uh, if you find the solutions, uh, if you solve, if you find a solution, a solution U to, to the homogeneous system, And a solution x not to the system itself, right? And a solution, a solution x not to to a x equals b. Then, like kind of going backwards, tells you that x not plus t u solves the original system. Then you know that x not plus t u will solve. Okay, and that's uh, I mean like again if you ever have to take differential equations, that's something you'll see um, when you're solving a differential equation which is called linear. What you actually do first is kind of solve the homogeneous 
the differential equation and then you find like what's called like a particular solution which is something like this and then kind of like a particular solution but like plus like the solutions to the homogeneous one gives you the solutions to to the entire equation it's kind of like more like how that's used in practice but it is um that's kind of like the the, the gist of it <laughs> Okay, so that was problem one. Okay, problem 43 is kind of similar. I can do it quickly if you want to. Uh, so. X one, X two, solve, solve, AX equals B, and then show that for any T, well, in fact, I mean, I put it between zero and one, but you don't need that. Let me write it that way. <laughs> Oh, it's the context. Right, it's what in the PDF I call the convex combination. Yeah. Um, the thing is, like, I put this between zero and one, uh, more like from a statistical point of view, because a probability is like a number between zero and one, right? So if you think of t and one minus t as probability, they add up to one, right? t plus one minus t equals one. So it's kind of like think of t as like some sort of probability, and this uh, one minus t as another probability. So it's kind of like adding two vectors with some probability. And that's saying that it's a new vector that also solves the system. Uh, and there's actually a cute video, uh, video of like how to use like these vectors for like video games. I'll make you watch it. Um, they mentioned some stuff about I think complex combinations in that in the video. So like this will give you better insight of how they look like. I mean, it is like a this is like a useful combinate like operation to do with vectors because you're kind of combining them. You know, if t were one half, it's like saying you're taking one half of this vector, one half of that other vector and combining them. If t is one quarter, it's like taking one quarter of this vector and three quarters of that vector, right? So it's kind of like a probability. It's kind of like similar to a game of chess where like uh, maybe it's not fair the game. So like one vector is appears more than the other um, in, in terms of these combinations. But I mean, for us, like you'll see like the solution of, of this problem is pretty straightforward. It's not that different from what you were what we were doing here. Right, so saying that this uh, solves the system, right, is saying that A x1 equals B and that A x2 equals B, right? That's what it means to say that it solves the system of equations, right? And then what we want to check is that if you multiply this thing, thing by A, whether or not you get B. So the question is whether, so the question is, whether A times T X one plus one minus T X two equals B or not. That's what I'm asking. If that's true, then we know that that solves the, the system of equations again. But uh, what is this thing? What is the left hand side?
what can you do with that uh, matrix multiplication? Distribute it. Right, like the idea just to distribute it, perfect. So if you distribute, you get a t x one plus a one minus t x two. Right, and there's slightly an extra step you can do here, right? Which is what? move the t in front of the a. right. You can take out the t's. Um, so this is e a x one plus one minus. Then you can take out well, one minus t and x two. Good, and we're almost there, right? Because what is a x one? A x one is b, right? And what is AX2? AX2 is also B. So this gives you like TB plus one minus TB, right? But you see like TB cancels this minus TB. So you just re recover one times B. And so it does solve the system again. So it's kind of saying that if you take two vectors and like combine them with some probability weights, that's kind of like, again, how you can think of these factors, then you recover like a solution to the original system. And the thing is like, since you're allowed to change the probabilities like, or the, the numbers between zero and one, you actually have infinitely many alternatives here, right? So this is like a way to show that once you have a solution to the system of equations, like once you have two solutions, to a system of equations, you have infinitely many because you just take their convex combinations and you get infinitely many solutions. Yeah. Is it any value of t, not just zero to one word? Yeah, it does, it definitely, for sure. Like, uh, I, I just put it between zero. Uh, it is true, like any real number would have done the trick. It's just that I like actually uh, for practical application, I mean, that's kind of redundant. For applications, you do want to think of these keys as some sort of probability. So typical probability, you think of as numbers between zero and one. So it's like literally, it is really like if you, again, like if you took t equals one half, it's like taking one half, probability 50% this vector, probability 50% that other vector, you combine them. So it's only because of that that I restricted it to being between zero and one. And again, like in this video game, I mean, this video about the video game, you'll see how the convex combinations look like. Um, the idea is like if you know, there's like a vector here and there's another vector here, like a convex combination is like the vector that connects the two. It's like the line, it's like a vector of line segments, uh, more or less. But yeah, it, it, you're right. Like it, you didn't really need to uh, restrict it to be between zero and one. It's just like, it has a nicer interpretation in that case. So this was 43. Is that okay? Question about this. So it's not, you see like this, uh, this one we have been doing, they're not too bad. We plan a few ones. They're not too bad, it's just that, um, it's just like for you to get used to some of the notation. So like like the other one before, like mentioning like how you should set up four, uh, this I'll tell you what you do for them before. It's like, um, it's 44, which is again, very similar to all of uh, this in spirit. Um, Suppose x1, x2 solve um, ax equals b. And show that xh equals x2 minus x1. Also, how much is it? We can even do it here because it's not.
I mean, so again, now this one does look a little bit repetitive because it's more or less essentially the same as the first two, but I mean, the, the previous two that I just did. But saying that x1 and x2 solve, uh, that just means that a x1 equals b, and then a x2 equals b, right? And yeah, uh, what does it mean to say that uh, x sub h solves the homogeneous system? That means like the question is whether a x sub h equals zero or not, right? A zero vector or not. Uh, but um, what is that the same as? A x of h would be A x2 minus times x2 minus x1. Right, and you did just, just distribute like as we were doing before. So it's just A x2 minus A x1. And that's, uh, well, what is A x2 and A x1? It just B minus B, right, which is zero. That makes sense. So what that means is like once you have like a more philosophical way to put it is like once you have a solution, two solutions to the original system, they're different from the homogeneous system. Uh, in practice, again, the way philosophically how you think about this is like uh, x two is like x sub h plus x one. So really how you think about this, in, uh, again, when you take like a course like differential equations, that like if you find the solutions to the homogeneous system and find a specific solution to the original system, then the sum, that's a combination or superposition always solves the original system. So it's kind of like you can construct the solutions from like a solution to the homogeneous one and uh, a specific solution to, to the original system. And again, like that's not something that we will exploit too much in this class, but if you ever take like a, differential equations class or something else like it does become like a useful principle to keep in mind. But in, for us, like it is more like, oh, apply distributive properties, just understand what it means to say that something solves the system and, and then you are done. But it does like, have useful implications again when you're solving like differential equations, uh, linear differential equations. Does that make sense? Okay, so just in the last uh, five or seven minutes, like let me just tell you how to set up uh, problem four because actually, uh, kind of similar to one of the or, uh, earlier ones we had done, but it does have like this word linear combination. So since I had not uh, used that word that much in class before, uh, just I think I just mentioned it briefly once. Let me just um, remind you what that meant. By the way, like on the exam, I'll always write you for you like the vectors as column vectors. It's just sometimes when you're typing things on the PDF, you feel a little bit lazy and write them sometimes a row, but you always rest assured, I'll always give them to you on the exam as column vectors. So like the convention, like for us philosophically, it's like the vectors are really column vectors. Um, so if you see something written down as rows, then on the problems, you can just like in your head, uh, turn them into column vectors. So, but I'll write them as column vectors just for how the statement, so that you know how the statement looks like. So, so the last one for today is problem four. So it just said a determine for which values of p. Uh, okay, I see. I get it. I'll add an extra part just in, uh, just to, uh, because just to say something.
And the last one, uh, determine for one value of P. Um, let's say the vector um, let's say P0, P0, it's a linear combination of those three vectors. Okay, so like the thing is like this uh, stuff about linear dependent independence will use a lot for the second midterm, so that's why I haven't spent too much time about that uh, here. So like I think I may have said it like briefly once, uh, but what like it is just solving a linear system. So what this means, uh, if you're telling you that some uh, if the question asks asks you if some vectors are linearly independent or not, what that means concretely is arrange the vectors into a matrix. So turn them into a matrix where the columns are those vectors. So make a matrix whose columns are these vectors. So the matrix A in this case would be uh, 1P, 1P, uh, 2P minus P plus 1 p plus one, two, and p minus one, p, p minus one, p, okay? And the idea is like, if the homogeneous system, right, if a x uh, equals zero, remember that a homogeneous system, I don't know if, like, <laughs> always has a solution, right? Like, at least has the, always a trivial solution. If, if uh, that has the uh, so has uh, only the unique solution. Okay, well, let me write it this, this, like this. If this has infinite many solutions, uh, then we say that the vectors are not linearly independent. Then these vectors are not. are not uh, linearly independent. Okay, so in part A, the only thing you have to find is the values of P for which this system has a unique solution. So you have to find here, so just find the values of P where AX equals zero has the, the, the has only one solution, uh, which is the trivial one. Okay, so this thing, again, uh, we'll spend more time about, uh, about this independence stuff, but saying that the vectors are independent just means that the homogeneous system has one solution. So if there are infinitely many solutions, if the system, uh, the vectors are not independent. And then just to finish, oh, sorry. There's no solution. No, it cannot happen because it's homogeneous. Okay. So the homogeneous, right, right, like that's kind of excluded. And just because I'm running out of time, like for part B, like what you do if, for this case, like you, you, you try to solve A, X equals the vector. And so if this has uh, at least one solution, like it could be infinitely many, or, or if, if, so if it has 
one for infinite solutions. Uh, this vector is a linear combination. Okay, so of, of, of uh, vectors from part A. Of, of, the, of, the, of the vectors, of the color vectors of the matrix. So determining if a vector uh, is a linear combination is just like essentially solving a system, uh, just finding if the system of equations has the least one solution. Okay, so it's like a, it's a small piece of terminology for you to keep in mind. It is not something new that we haven't done. Like it's just solving a system of equations. So it's similar to the one we started with the dependent on the variable a, you just have to start reducing the matrix. This one is a little bit long because it has a what four n four rows, but you start reducing the matrix and check well for which values of p do you get solutions to a done. Okay, so yeah, I think maybe Mitchell. Uh, remember, I do have office hours now from three thirty to five, and I believe uh, where T A Mitchell was giving some Zoom office hours uh, sometime this week. But I'll, if not, I'll see you on Monday for. The extent, but yeah, just study the PDF problems, check these problems, uh, the example we have done in class, and then you will be fine. So I'll see you on uh, Monday. Some of the uh, PDF problems are outside of your scope of the first midterm, right? <laughs> yeah, like the ones I eliminated on the midterm study guide. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you can ignore those. It's on Canvas. There's like an announcement that says uh, information for exam one. And that one has like the PDF. Uh, it may be also somewhere on modules on Canvas, the study guide for the for the exam, but definitely it's on that announcement. Yeah, yeah. and there it, there it says which problems you can ignore. Yeah. 